Hey guys, it's John from Album Review TV. It's time for a review of Balance and Composure's sophomore effort. It's titled, The Things We Think We're Missing. And make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I am announcing the contest winners. And uh, basically, uh, congrats to you guys. I thank you so much for watching and entering. I had 90 people enter, I think it was total. So thank you guys so much for that. So let's go ahead and jump into this review. Balance and Composure is a rock band out of Pennsylvania that I've been hearing about all year long, honestly, and I've had a couple of friends, a lot of you guys here on the channel telling me to check them out, and honestly, I was missing out, and I hate that I did not check them out sooner, and I'm going to go back and check out their debut album as well. Someone told me that these guys sounded a lot like Sunny Day Real Estate, and I was thinking to myself, no way. You know, these days, bands do not sound like 90s rock groups, and they, you know, throw in these modern touches or things that they think are needed to, like, make music or be popular in this day and age, so I was thinking, no way, and I was proved wrong. This band sounds like they are straight out of the 90s, but they definitely have their own creative style. That's why I'm so into this record and this band right now. Yes, the album does have its flaws. The vocals tend to tire on me uh, from time to time. You know, when I'm listening to the record, sometimes I feel like I need a break from this, and I feel like the vocals are something you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate, but this band definitely straight up reminds me of Sunny Day Real Estate, a band that I really do like. Uh, Diary is probably an album that I will review for Throwback Thursday at some point. So yes, the album does has it have its flaws, but it's easy to overlook because of the great musicianship that is just shown here on this record. The heaviness of the guitars are just really unmatched by any band that uh, any rock band that is that I really listen to these days. It's something that yeah, sure you're going to see heavy guitars, loud guitars, and metalcore bands and things of that nature, those type genres. But for like a rock band, you're not going to hear that for the most part. Queens of the Stone Age are the only other thing that I can think of that I've listened to in recent times that have really hard guitars for just a straight up rock and roll group. Balance and Composure immediately struck a good chord with me as soon as I heard the opening riffs from the track Reflection. I was immediately drawn in. It was ecstasy, pure gold to me while I was listening. I immediately got the full album, started listening, and I'm extremely impressed with the results. The riffs are memorable, the lyrics are relatable, the passion in the vocals feels effective and heartfelt for the majority of the record. After a while, like I said, lead vocalist John Simmons' vocals do start to grow old to me, but overall, you know, it's a small price to pay for such an enthralling musical ride. Parachutes is the track that leads off this record with a barrage of guitars and angst-filled vocals. The whole song really just questions life and uses the analogy of a parachute to say that even though life is going to feel like it's falling apart, the parachutes, so to speak, are gonna break your fall. I guess that could be like the people in your life or the things in your life surrounding you will keep you from completely like smacking your face against the ground and face planting. There's so many good uses of guitar here on this record. Lost Your Name, Tiny Raindrop, and the very like, uh, you know, just heartfelt and just almost desperate notice me. I'm Swimming is a track that has a very strong feel to it with one of my favorite choruses on the entire record with the track that follows it being When I Come Undone done, that one has turned into one of my overall favorites. As far as catchy guitar goes, this track, When I Come Undone, and the track Reflection are at the top of the list for this record. The song has a supercharged feel to it and has become, like I said, one of the most enjoyable listens for me on this record. Along with the track Reflection, which is my overall favorite, the track that got me into this band, got me hooked, started listening to it, I just cannot ever get that guitar riff out of my head, nor do I really want to. It's just so, so captivating and magical when I'm listening to it, honestly. It's something that, it, you know, it starts with a simple guitar and you can just hear it and then it finally all crashes in, the drums, the bass, and just throughout, it's a very, very relatable track and it definitely would have been on my top 50 list for 2013 had I heard it sooner. I really enjoy how many of these tracks flow in and out and connect to one another. I'm finding more and more that I enjoy albums when they do that, instead of just having like an abrupt cutoff and then having to start all over again on the next track. I think it makes me feel more engaged and just into a record whenever they are flowing 
with each other. The track Back of Your Head has an intro and vocal approach that reminds me so much of the 90s, in a good way of course. They've definitely got their own style, like I said, but they take so many influences from bands like Nirvana and Sunny Day Real Estate and apply it to their music. This track immediately reminded me of Nirvana because Something in the Way is a line that was dropped here on this track, Back of Your Head, and I don't know if that was a reference to the Nirvana track off of Nevermind, Something in the Way or not, but it's just immediately where my mind went. Dirty Head is the slower acoustic track on the record, and one that I'm having a little bit of trouble getting into. I understand uh, the meaning behind it and just how it is something that was necessary for the record, but for me it's just not one that I'm fully enjoying, but I really do enjoy the last tracks on the record, Keepsake and Enemy. Enemy is the perfect closer for this album. Overall, I really enjoyed this record, but my only complaints are the vocals at times and the fact that I feel like some of these tracks don't have very high replay factors. That's why I'm going with a four out of five and not a 4.5 out of five. So overall for me, this album is a four. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments section down below. I'm really enjoying this thing, honestly and I'm excited to have it. I'm excited to have discovered this band and thanks to all of you guys who recommended this and that I check out Balance and Composure. So make sure you hit the like button. Oh wait, you're ready for the winners of the contest. Here, here are the screenshots of the winners. They're gonna be popping up one, two, three across the screen, of course. Three, two, one is the order that they're actually going in. I don't know what I said it like, why I said it like that, but all the winners have been contacted. Just make sure you check your inboxes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you very soon. Let me know what I should review next in the comments section down below. The first albums of the year are starting to drop soon. I'm ready for that Young the Giant record. That's the first one that I'm really excited about for the year. But let me know what else I should review in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and as always, Album Review TV, Beyond the Reviews.